If you haven't opened a news app in the last week, you might have not heard that the Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau, recently stood up in the House of Commons to declare that agents of the Indian government were allegedly involved in a killing of a Canadian national. Hardeep Singh Najjar, who had been declared a terrorist as the head of the Khalistani Tiger Force in India, was 45 years old when he was fatally murdered by two mass shooters. And you see, despite the fact that the Canadian Prime Minister admitted that the investigation was still ongoing, his administration had already chosen to dismiss a senior diplomat from the Indian High Commission. And the Prime Minister's proclamation has not gone down well in India, nor has it received much international support, despite the fact that uh, the information given was by Canada's allies. Enough of this talking though, let's get straight into what happened. We'll begin our story on September 20th, 2023. You see, this was the G20 summit meeting in India. And whilst Canada and India did not talk one-on-one, -on -one, they did have private conversations. Prime Minister Modi discussed Khalistani protests in Canada with Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, while Trudeau raised the allegations of Indian government involvement in the death of Hardeep Singh Najjar. The two leaders' talks were hostile, which hampered ongoing trade talks. But yet again, this was private conversation. It would only be later in September that Trudeau testified in the House of Commons on credible allegations of potential link of Indian government involvement in Najjar's murder. Although giving no evidence, you see, as a result of this, diplomatic ties between the two countries deteriorated further, and each side announced the expulsions of key diplomats. And you might be wondering, how did India react to this allegation? And whilst they didn't say anything public after the private meeting on September 20th, following Trudeau's comments in the House of Commons, India stated that these remarks were absurd and motivated. India also warned its residents in Canada to exercise utmost caution in light of growing anti-India activities. And you see, these anti-India activities revolve around the Khalistan movement, which Mr. Najjar supported. You see, the Khalistan movement is a separatist movement that seek to establish an ethno-religious sovereign state called Khalistan in the Punjab region to provide a homeland for Sikhs. And if you know anything about the Punjab region, you know it is a very high-tension place for India, and they have cracked down on this movement extensively, extensively enough that many pro-Khalistan Sikhs are in Canada. However, the issues for Canadians is that Najjar was a Canadian citizen with a Canadian passport. He emigrated out of India in the mid-1990s and was seen by Sikh organizations as a human rights activist, but seen as a terrorist from the Indian government, as he was quite outspoken for the separatist movement. You see, Najjar has been looked at by the government for some time now. The Indian government requested surveillance of Najjar in 2015, stating that he was involved in a plot to transfer ammunition into India via paraglider. However, in a letter to Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau in 2016, Najjar termed the Indian government's allegations as fabricated, baseless, fictitious, and politically motivated, and said they were a part of a smear attempt to destroy him. Najjar stated that my Sikh nationalist activities are peaceful, democratic, and protected under the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, and that he never believed in, supported, or participated in any violent activity. However, moving forwards for Najjar, Trudeau's allegations have brought more than just a warning to Indian citizens. You see, on September 21st, India banned Canada visa applications till further notice. A spokesperson for India's foreign ministry accused of Canada of being a safe haven for terrorists, extremists, and organized crime. And this is pretty much where we're at with the back and forth. However, one missing thing is the evidence. You see, Trudeau still has not publicly given any evidence, and India also states they haven't received any evidence. So where does this allegation come from? Well, a Canadian official indicated that the allegations of India's participation in the killing of a Sikh Canadian is based on monitoring of Indian diplomats in Canada, including intelligence provided by a major ally. You see, the official stated that the conversation involved Indian officials and diplomats in Canada, and that some of the intelligence was provided by a member of the Five Eyes, which is an intelligence sharing agreement which includes the United States, the United Kingdom, Australia, and New Zealand. However, as of today, none of these countries have come out in favor of Canada's charges or condemned India. 
so I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens next. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and let me know what else you'd like to see next.